as a Detroiter, I know that when people who are not from Detroit jump in Detroit business, I feel away. So I'm going to tread lightly with this week's topic because I'm inserting myself in another city's business. Now, last week, social media influencer Keith Lee set the city of Atlanta on fire. For those unfamiliar, Keith Lee is a well-known social media food critic who has millions of TikTok and Instagram followers. A glowing review from him has changed the courses of small businesses literally overnight. Now in Atlanta, Keith basically exposed a classist restaurant subculture that seems anti-customer and in some cases very anti-black. Some people were so upset about what Keith shed light on that they not only threatened some of the restaurants he visited, but they had the nerve to threaten Keith and his family over some fucking food critiques. And as of the recording of this podcast, Keith is shutting down his food tour. You can disagree with me. You cannot like what I say. Completely understand. I'm okay with that. But when my safety and my family's safety start coming into play, that's where I draw the line at. But what can't happen is when my family or the restaurants or anybody's safety start coming into play. It's absolutely overboard. Especially when I was asked to give my opinion. Because you telling me my opinion only matter if it's positive. Because if it's positive, you got my face plastered on the wall and you saying keep sleeping here. But if it's negative, I need to sit down somewhere and you don't know who I am. That's crazy to me. So I'm fucking bothered for a lot of reasons. Threatening anybody's physical safety over a critique is just asinine and weak. But let me recap for you how all this shit started. Keith and his family spent a weekend in Atlanta reviewing food spots that were either suggested to him or he was invited to. One restaurant that invited him to visit is called Old Lady Gang, which is owned by Real Housewives of Atlanta star Candy Burris and her husband Todd. And this was Keith's review. Yesterday, me and my family were at the One Music Festival. Somebody who works with Candy Birds walked up to us and said they've been trying to reach us since we got to Atlanta. He said he'd been constantly emailing me and constantly DMing me for me to come to Old Lady Gang. I got it. Let's try it and rate it 1 through 10. As you can see, I don't have any bags in my hands. Me and my family showed up and we attempted to order before we got here. We called the number they had connected on Yelp three times. No answer. We tried to order through DoorDash and it said it was temporarily closed. So when we pulled up, I sent my family in to order for us. They said on the weekends, due to being busy, they don't do any takeout at all. They use it to go order? No, we don't do food on the weekend. Oh, okay, so send in dining. Yes. Okay, thank you, sweetie. We appreciate you. Which is completely understandable. So what we decided to do is my family's gonna go eat. They're gonna come bring the food out while I'm sitting in the car so they have no idea I'm here. My family asked how long the wait was to be seated. They said an hour to an hour and a half. Yes, hour and a half. Okay. She also said they didn't have any reservations available. So they didn't take out any number, any contact information, nothing. Now, considering that you couldn't call ahead to order, they didn't take reservations. There was an hour and a half wait and they never took any of their information. I mean, what kind of review would you expect? And on top of that, things switched up real fast when Keith himself got involved. My family then came and relayed that message to me and I decided to go in myself. We walked in and we were greeted by a nice young lady. And then I met some amazing people who were eating there and we took some pictures. God is amazing. As soon as me and my wife were done taking pictures, the lady said the table was ready. As always, I don't want any special treatment. I want to be treated like everybody else. I pay for my food like everybody else. I'm a normal person. I'm a normal customer. Things like this is exactly why I do reviews the way I do. Just because I have a certain amount of followers on social media don't make me different from nobody. Considering all those circumstances, I personally think Keith was pretty gracious. Now, Candy did respond with class and apologize, explaining that the restaurant doesn't take orders on the weekends because they're too busy and don't want to overwhelm their workers but she didn't really address how that hour and a half wait time went to five minutes because he walked in nevertheless from a pr standpoint old lady gang didn't handle it too badly as for the restaurant the real milk and honey in college park they clearly weren't advised correctly on how to handle a crisis before we came we attempted to call our order in we were greeted with an automatic message that said they do not take call-in orders the automatic message said the only way you can do pickup is through doordash we went through doordash they was closed but online it said they closed at five o'clock we went on doordash at four o'clock but we were already here, so we just went inside. I stayed in the car and my family went in and they told them they were closed early for deep cleaning. Yet the door is wide open and it's people still going in and grabbing their orders. Now we have no idea if those people ordered beforehand or what the case is. Also, the people who relayed this message, my family said were really nice. It's just the rules. And so far being in Atlanta, I found some places do have unique rules and this is one of them. I want to be very clear, we're not blaming one person or saying one person was rude in plain terms. Don't call this restaurant trying to get nobody fired. Ain't nobody do nothing. This is just the rules they had. If you don't like their rules, their rules not for you. And for me and my family, the rules just went for us. We just not their target audience. For the record, afterwards, I did walk in and they did recognize and they attended the services, but I respectfully declined. Again, these are the facts. No call in orders. DoorDash was a no go. Closed early for deep cleaning. Basically, it was a busted trip. You'd think the owners of the real milk and honey would have been a little bit embarrassed or at the very least contrite? Well, you would be guessing wrong. Did you see this Keith Lee video about the real milk and honey? And who is this Keith Lee? Daddy. You don't know Keith Lee? Yeah. No. And if you thought that was bad, one of the employees at The Real Milk and Honey went on TikTok and said, quote, y'all let an autistic man tell you where to eat. Keith Lee is a good Christian because boy, 
I would have spent the next six months frying that place. But by all accounts, Keith is a good brother who in all of his videos goes out of his way to give these businesses a break, even though some of them clearly don't deserve one. He makes sure to also instruct his followers not to call these places and try to get folks fired or to take his experience as gospel. Let me be clear, all of his experiences weren't bad in Atlanta, but after his experiences went viral, it touched off wide ranging conversations and debates about black businesses, black customers, what our expectations are of each other. And this trend where black restaurants in Atlanta, though I think some of this happens in other major cities like DC and Houston and Miami, but how these places basically brought club culture to the restaurant industry. Here's what some of the folks from Atlanta had to say about Keith Lee's experiences. I'm so glad that Keith Lee is talking about these Atlanta restaurants because there is a reason why I don't go out to a lot of restaurants here. Story time. So this past week, I went to a restaurant for my friend's birthday. And this is the reason why I didn't act a damn fool. It was her birthday. So another friend in our friend group handled most of the issues because I just wasn't in the mood. From the time that we sat down and ordered our drinks, to the time that my drink actually arrived, it was an hour and 18 minutes. You heard me right. Y'all already know Kid Lee is in Atlanta and let's talk about it because I have several reasons I think the food industry in Atlanta is such ass, complete and total trash. You know, Kid Lee, he's a man of God. He not gonna tell y'all and drag y'all like y'all need to be dragged. So let me tell you my thoughts. First of all, if I go to brunch or lunch or dinner or any type of meal, why is there a full page of rules and regulations I gotta follow before I can get something to eat? Keith Lee said in one of his videos, you can't call ahead, you can't order ahead, nothing. Exactly. That is ridiculous. A lot of these Atlanta restaurants want to be exclusive so bad, but when you go in there, you can see that it's just for aesthetics. The food is not good, the drinks are not good, it's just an aesthetic, it's an Instagram restaurant. You go there and you take pictures. That is what these restaurants have put high on their priority list. They have not put food or customer service or any other experience high on that list. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I can't eat vibes. I can't eat clicks. A couple months ago, I reposted comments from a black woman who was critical of black owned clubs, lounges and restaurants operating in Houston because she believes a lot of these establishments are financially draining black customers. I love to see black people doing good in Houston, but I think okay. now it's to the point, it's like we're burning our people out financially with a certain lifestyle. Oh, that's a good topic. And I, I, I'm not catering, I don't, I don't like that. You know what I mean? It's nothing wrong with getting money, yeah. But it's our people, from from what I can tell, you go out to our clubs. Like, I can go to an expensive five-star restaurant. Mm -hmm. They're not going to charge me 20% gratuity on me and my husband or me and my homegirl. I'm not going to pick. The valet is usually free when you pull up, as long as you're going to the restaurant. Mm. You know what I mean? Even if you go to a hookah lounge, if you go to a classy hookah lounge, you're going to pay 25 to 30 So it's nothing wrong with black businesses getting money, but right. I think they're draining us of the money. So now we're back to an age-old argument that is steep in some very familiar stereotypes that black businesses lag behind in customer services and professionalism and these establishments have a strong tendency to overcharge and implement strict policies because they serve a black customer base and black customers are supposedly rude, don't tip, y'all know the rest. Let me be transparent here. I've never had a bad restaurant or club experience in Atlanta, but that's because I'm usually rolling with people who typically have enough clout to avoid those issues that the average person sometimes encounters on the Atlanta scene. I'm also not outside outside like some of y'all are in Atlanta. I'm too old for some of these places. They're loud, I can't hookah and chicken at the same time, I'm lazy, and unless I'm truly motivated, if you got a specific dress code, I ain't got nothing for you. I'm not your audience and I'm totally fine with that. But from where I sit, I see a lot of room for blame and understanding on both sides. One of the reasons black businesses struggle to scale and maintain quality service is because they disproportionately face obstacles that non-black businesses do not. Only 1% of black business owners obtain loans in their founding year compared to 7% of white business owners. Black and brown business owners also are three times more likely to be denied a loan. And if they do receive one, they are likely to receive a lower loan amount than white business owners. And not only do we not have access to the same capital, if a black business is in an underserved area, a black business owner will be forced to pay more overhead for security and insurance. And unfortunately, that black tax is often passed down to the paying customers. Too many of us have had experiences with black owned businesses where we aren't treated with dignity or respect and the professionalism is sorely lacking. Case in point are the rules at a lot of these bars, lounges, and restaurants that we know are only in place because they're serving a black customer base. Take a look at the house rules for the aforementioned real milk and honey. 18% gratuity for priorities of five or more or checks larger than $75. No reservations, 
no menu modifications. So if you have a food allergy, oh well. No parties larger than four or more. 90 minute limit on a table and no waiting area inside. So your ass is just basically gonna be waiting in the car if you have to wait to get a table. While at white owned establishments, you see some of these same policies, automatic gratuity for big parties, and in some cases, any party. Also a restaurant not taking reservations isn't unusual, but I'll be honest, rarely at these sort of white owned spots or places where white folks frequent is there a time limit on a table. Rarely do I see an entrance fee just to get in the restaurant. Additional charges for condiments. If you want people to be committed to supporting black businesses, you can't be charging us 25 sense for air once we step into your spot. Now I can already anticipate some of y'all typing in the comments. Well, if you just broke, just say that. <laughs> your girl is hardly broke, but wherever I go, I want to feel good about spending my money. I want to feel like I'm doing something worthy. I don't want to feel like I'm being price gouged or that I'm living in some version of Jim Crow. But at the same time, let's also not absolve customers for bad behavior because I have certainly witnessed some of us behaving rudely and disrespectfully in black owned businesses, knowing damn well we wouldn't dare show out like that in a white restaurant. Some of us don't wanna pay for the exceptional service that we demand, or we think just because we're patronizing a black business that we're owed something. These are professionals who deserve to get paid for what they are worth. Bottom line, there's room for improvement by both customers and business owners. There's also some room for some grace. Somehow we have to get out of this habit of thinking the worst and expecting the worst from one another and having that show up in how we do business with each other. As for Atlanta, it sounds like a lot of y'all restaurants need to course correct because you're rapidly losing the people who desperately want to find ways to support you. I also don't believe this is just an Atlanta problem. However, in the meantime, if y'all want to still give some celebrity some special treatment, like hook a sister up when she is coming through, I ain't Keith Lee. I don't want to wait an hour. Stay unbothered.